Hey everyone, it's Michelle from Shells Bits and Pieces. How is everyone doing today? Um, today's video we're going to actually work on some background papers and then I'm going to put together another video showing how to make these really cool specimen cards. Um, I did post a photo of these on a Facebook group and there was a lot of interest in how I made them so I will be doing a tutorial video on that as well but today's focus is going to be on these really cool backgrounds that I made and this just looks so metallic and shiny and I'm just in love with um, the process and it was super easy and fast so why don't we just go ahead and get started and uh, we'll see where this journey takes us so stick with me Okay, so to get started, we're going to work on these really, really pretty backgrounds. And the way that I did them was super simple. The only thing that you're going to need for this particular project is, and if you have this, if you don't have it, you could use whatever you do have. You just may not get the shiny results. But what I did was I used this photo paper, and you can use any brand, it doesn't matter. I found this at the Goodwill bins, <clears throat> so I didn't pay much for it but you know I rescued it from the landfill so that's a good thing um, and I did find a couple of different brands I've got HP and I've got Canon and I think for my preference the Canon was actually better as far as my results but the HP works just as good um, it is glossy photo paper and I think that that helps with the um, the shininess and the metallic like nature of the final results so let's just go ahead and jump right in so you're gonna need some photo paper if you have it if not you can use watercolor paper you can use cardstock but like I said you won't get the glossy metallic effect um, as well as if uh, you use photo paper so I recommend photo paper for this particular project and it is easy to cut it's easy to do you know everything else you're doing with it's the only difference is that it's got some kind of special chemical stuff on it so that if you were to print photos from your printer they would look really pretty and that's kind of where I'm going with that sorry I'm babbling <laughs> <laughs> so let's just get started. Um, today we're going to use a couple of colors of Distress Mica Stain by Ranger and Tim Holtz. And this one is Fallen Acorn. I don't know if you can see that real well. Let's see if I can get that to focus for you. Yep, Fallen Acorn. And it is the Mica Stain. And then this one is Empty Tomb. And these particular colors came from the new line of Tim Holtz distress mica stains for Halloween and um, from what I understand there's some new ones coming out for Christmas so I'm probably gonna buy those too so to get started we're gonna start with just a blank piece of glossy photo paper and we're gonna spray with a little bit of just plain water like my fancy water bottle it's got some cool dots I think I picked this up at the Dollar Tree before they were a dollar twenty-five <laughs> And you want to make sure that if you have the Distress Mica Stain that you shake it up really good because on the bottom, if you don't shake it good, the mica kind of sits there and that's why there's these, um, these balls and stuff. So let's just see what we can come up with. So this first one, we're just going to take and we're going to spray some water. And the water helps to move the spray. Um, and you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about and be generous with your spray don't worry about how much you're getting and you know if you don't want to be wasteful you don't have to spray as much you can spray a little or a lot whatever is your preference but I thought that these two colors together would give a nice um, metallic maybe coppery look and I am going to get my handy dandy tweezers and you're gonna wanna like move this around a little bit so that the colors kind of blend together. And you can put as much or as little as you want. And you can put more water on it to let the colors move a little bit, you know, however you'd like. And yes, I am making a huge mess, but I will clean it up. And I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but the colors are starting to really just kind of marble and move around. And I'll put this up here a little bit closer so you can see. You know, you get this little um, extra bit of 
liquid forming on the sides and if you just kind of move the card around and I'm sorry I'm not very graceful at this I'm trying to watch what I'm doing on the camera as well as do the craft so you know it's one of those things we'll we'll get there guys I promise <laughs> so what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna shut this off and I'm gonna clean up the mess behind me and then we're going to get the um, heat gun and we're gonna dry it and then we'll layer on a few more colors just so that we get that nice metallic-y uh, layered look. So bear with me just a moment. All right, so we cleaned up the mess. Um, the great thing about the Distress Mica Stain is that it's very easy to clean up with water. Uh, you just need a little spritz or a wet rag or whatever you have and it will it will clean up pretty good. And I wanted to show you, I'm going to use a third color, um, but I wanted to show you here um, what I was talking about earlier with the mica kind of sitting at the bottom of the spray bottle. So you have to shake it up really good and make sure that you break up all those little particles so that way you can get them in the design that you're trying to do. And I think that this is a cool color. It's called Unraveled. This is also part of the um, the Halloween collection. I don't know if it's a new color this year or if it was new last year. I haven't been following along so I really don't know. But I really liked all of the colors that they had that I saw in the store so I grabbed them up. I think I have like 15 sprays and um, you know the colors are just really vibrant and beautiful and uh, when I found that I could use them on the glossy photo paper I was just hooked. So I, I hope that this will hook you guys too. Um, anyway let's shake this up really good and get the mica moving through the sprayer because I would really like to spray this on as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead while I'm trying to do this. I'm going to dry this as best I can and I had to buy a new heat gun. I bought a Wagner this time. The one that I had gotten was something that was made in China or something and it only worked once or twice and then it died. So I returned it and I bought this. Um, so I will try to dry this and move this video or this part of this video through a little bit quicker and then we'll get on to the layering and uh, then we'll have a finished background and maybe we'll make one more and then the video will be over and then I can move on to the actual tutorial of making these really 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 pretty Halloween inspired specimen cards. Let's let's just do this guys alright so I'm gonna dry this. flew away and it's for the most part it's dry. Um, I don't know if you can see I, I have a really really great craft space that has so much natural light and sometimes it's too much but hopefully you can kind of get a gist of what's happening here. Let me put a little bit more heat on it real quick and then we'll layer up some more color. I learned um, I, I watch a lot of Tim Holtz because you know he showcases all of these wonderful products and of course gets us all excited about the holidays and whatnot and making really cool items but you can dab off any excess and it really doesn't do much as far as ruining your design it actually kind of adds to it um, hopefully you guys can see this I'm gonna try to bring this in a little closer um, maybe I'll be able to do some cool editing so that you can actually see how pretty this is turning out. Um, I'm going to spritz it with a little bit more water because this stuff is very water reactive. It will set and then you can reactivate it when you put more water on it. So I'm going to put a little water and then I'm going to use this color Unravel because it's got like a really light shininess to it and I think, I think it will add to the shine. Um, I'm going to show you this one. This one actually has unraveled layered on the top of it. You can kind of see that whitish color. That's kind of how it looks when it's on there um, when you layer it on top. So I'm going to layer a little bit of this after I spray some water. Like I said it's going to reactivate the, the inks and we'll just kind of spray on a little extra and you, you know what I like to do is like to, I like to look and see where the spots are that maybe I didn't get enough spray and uh, add it to those areas like the corners or the sides because then 
you know, kind of fill in those empty spots. And I'm not even gonna move this, I'm just gonna dry it, so let's dry it. All right, I think that this is good. Um, this is just really, really pretty. And if you've noticed, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame. If you notice that the paper did curl a little bit, it will relax as the heat dissipates from the paper and it actually dries fully. But this is really, really pretty. And I think that this will make a really nice background for one of our fall, fall or Halloween inspired specimen cards. Once again, the colors I used on this were Unraveled, Fallen Acorn, an empty tomb and it just has a really nice brown metallic look to it almost vintagey and you could add more color if you want you could um, you don't have to layer it the beauty of this um, distress mica stain is it's very versatile and it's very personal you can do whatever you want with it and come up with some really really pretty designs and they're one of a kind what I suggest if you're so inclined if you have a scanner every time you make one of these backgrounds scan it in your computer because then you'll always have an image of it and you can print it off later at another time on whatever kind of paper you want and then that way you know if you really liked the design you don't have to try to duplicate it you'll always have a, a backup copy of it so that's what I like to do once in a while um, this is really the basics on how to create your own background paper. I know this is a short video, but I hope you guys enjoyed the process of making this really cool distress mica stain background. We're going to take this in our next video and we're going to make one of these really awesome specimen cards with it. So I hope you'll come back and join me for that video. And I hope that uh, you're inspired to create your own backgrounds and be, don't be afraid to use color. Color is where it's at, you know. I just happened to choose these colors today because we were doing, we're gonna be doing a fall inspired specimen card. And uh, you know, you can use any color that you want. You don't have to use the distress, distress mica stains. You can try alcohol ink. You can try watercolor paint. Um, I haven't tried any of those, but maybe in a future video we will. <laughs> So for now, guys, I really appreciate you joining me on this, uh, just a quick background tutorial on how to make background papers. And uh, in the next video, we're going to use this one, like I said, to make a really cool Halloween or fall inspired specimen card. And until then, guys, um, I will see you on the next one. And don't forget, if you like this content, if you want to see more, or if you have any really great ideas, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Comments are great because then I kind of know what you guys are looking for or you know you can tell me what you liked about the video what you didn't like about the video um, things that maybe you would like to see um, you know I'm the the world is our oyster and possibilities are endless so whatever you guys are thinking that you'd like to learn about and if I have the skill set I would be very very happy to teach you um, so yeah that's it for this one we'll move on to the next one and I hope you guys have a wonderful day once again my name is Michelle this is Shell's Bits and Pieces I hope you all have a great day